Hey guys, so I am back. I'm going to try the second box of Mishmash, the sweet mac and mellow flavor. Um, the reason I haven't been back this week is I'm still dealing with this lingering congestion and cough, and it just, it, it sucks. Like, what the heck, me? You know, three weeks ago yesterday, this cold hit me, and it's like, why aren't I better? <sighs> you know, come on, immune system, kick in. Anyway, <clears throat> You guys made the last video where I talked about the peanut butter and honey sandwich mishmash, the most viewed video on this channel so far. So thank you so much for that. That is awesome. And I've got the comments on that video up and I'm going to respond to some of them. So, you know, you got my responses uh, through a video. Let me see. Yeah, a lot of people were like, I can't believe you did the milk first and all that. Yeah, I know, it's cereal sacrilege. Let me explain. When I have... So my two favorite cereals are Frosted Flakes and Frosted Mini Wheats. And especially when I have Frosted Mini Wheats, you know what, I'm going to open the box right now. But especially when I have Frosted Mini Wheats, one of the things that annoys the heck out of me is how quickly Frosted Mini Wheats go from being this, you know nice kind of crunchy cereal you know with of course the frosting on top and everything to a soggy gross mess so what I will do is I will pour the milk into the bowl first and then I will just grab a handful of frosted mini wheats to put into the bowl with the milk already there because that way I can gauge better how much cereal I have to how much milk I put in instead of, you know, just pouring a bowl and being like, okay, you know, how how much milk can I reasonably put in here so that it doesn't turn into this soggy, gross mess that I'm not going to want to eat, but then I wind up with a bunch of dry cereal on top that the milk hasn't touched, because if I fill it up, because if I fill up the bowl with cereal first, it's like, okay, now there's too much cereal for me to be able to stir it properly. I know, I'm weird. There's a whole thought process that goes into this thing, and it's it's just kind of sounding crazier the more I try to explain it, but what are you going to do? Anyway, um, <laughs> oh, sorry, congestion. Um, the reason that I did it with the uh, cereal here, to be honest, I have no idea. <sighs> it would have made a lot more sense for me to just take the bag out of the box pour something in, and then pour some milk in. But I didn't. Like I said, cereal sacrilege. I get it. And once again, we have a much smaller bag than the box would indicate. And once again, that is kind of disappointing. It's like, all right, you know, come on. We could totally do a larger bag in here. We could totally have, you know, a Ziploc container, um on the front of the bag, but, oh well, what are you gonna do? Oh, hold on one second, I gotta blow my nose, I'll be right back. Okay, back. So, um, anyway, like I said, smaller bag than, you know, you want with a box that is the size that this is. And, oh. All right, this is being annoying. I'm just gonna use scissors. So, there we go. I have it open and cereal in first. I'm not gonna give myself a huge amount. I will also admit that the reason that I didn't come back on Wednesday or Friday, I'm sorry, hearing all the crackling, I probably shouldn't be talking while I'm doing all that with the bag. Anyway, the reason that I didn't come back uh, Wednesday or Friday was because I kind of had to hype myself up to try this cereal. Um, you know, I, you get weird things in your head about food and it kind of puts you off of it. And the fact that this is called Sweet Mac and Mellow and it legit does look like macaroni and cheese because here is what one of them looks like. You know, I'm, I'm going, ugh, savory cereal, even though I know it's not. 
I know that it's not savory, but it's in my head that mac and cheese, and mac and cheese is savory, so it's like, ugh, I had to get around that in my head. I totally had to, uh, you know, it's like, it's like that one episode with the uh, Willet Sushi, I need an equation. This is made from trees, man. Trees is plants. Plants, plants is, is vegetables. <laughs> vegetables is food. <laughs> Oh, now, let me make sure I got yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put this. Yeah. Toilet paper is tree. Trees is, is plants. plants. Plants is vegetables. Is vegetables. vegetables. Vegetables is food. Um. So yeah, what other comments have been part of the last one? Um. One person asked about the flavoring of the milk afterwards, and I'm gonna be honest. I did not notice that. I would definitely have to eat another bowl of, you know, both of these to be able to judge that. Um, I, that happens to me with regular cereal, too, with Frosted Flakes, Frosted Mini Wheats. You know, I will definitely drink the milk. You know, if I'm not going to have any more cereal, I will definitely drink the milk um, afterwards, and I will not notice how sweet it's gotten thanks to the cereal until I have more milk that is fresh out of the carton, out of the fridge, and then I'm going, oh yeah, this is what regular milk tastes like. So maybe what I'll do is next video, I will have both of these, let them sit in the milk for a little while, and then taste the milk um, with, you know, regular, with a glass of regular milk there as a control, and see what the taste is like and see how it differs. Let's see. Um... To be honest, how many bowls I think I got out of it with the size of these bags, I'm not entirely sure. I have had, um, I think two more bowls of the peanut butter and honey of the first box that I opened on camera last video. So I think I've had like three bowls all together. Um, and I still have some of that, uh, some of that box left. So, um, let's see. I would probably guess like four, four and a half bowls. Um, but that is another thing that, you know what, I will keep better track of because I do have two boxes each of these. So I will keep better track of that and I will let you guys know in a future video. One person commented that they were curious about the taste of these and if it was definitely worth it to buy, considering that it is four boxes for $40. Um, just judging by the peanut butter and honey sandwich alone, I would say yes, that it's worth it. I don't know that I will buy this cereal again in the future just because of the price and, you know, $10 a box, especially with the smaller bags, is kind of like, okay, really? You know, but at the same time, it is good cereal. And you know what? One thing that I did want to mention is I hadn't looked at this before, but after I did the first video, I looked at the ingredients list. And literally, like, I wanted to get, um, you know, far Frosted Flakes or Frosted Mini Wheats and really talk about the difference, is it, difference in ingredients list. And maybe I'll do that next video when I do the milk comparison. But if you look at the ingredients list on, let me confirm, yeah, it's both of these. Literally, the ingredients list on the peanut butter and honey sandwich is toasted cereal squares, whole wheat flour, yellow corn flour, cane sugar, salt, baking soda, cane sugar, honey, peanut butter, dry roasted peanuts. That's it. That's the ingredients list. And I mean, you know, it, it sucks for people with allergies. So if you have a peanut allergy, you will not be able to eat this and... I'm guessing that both of these are made in the same factory, so you would want to be careful with the second one. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like there are any, any, um, you know, peanut allergy ingredients in the second one. But like I said, be careful because they're probably made in the same factory. Um, you know, cross-contamination can happen accidentally, so beware of that. But I love that literally that's the ingredients list. There 
isn't a whole bunch of preservatives and, you know, fake flavoring and, and fake dyes and all that kind of stuff in it. And the Sweet Mac and Mellow says corn cereal, which is yellow corn flour, cane sugar, salt, natural flavor, turmeric and annatto for color. Uh, mini marshmallows, which are corn syrup, sugar, gelatin, starch, water, natural vanilla flavor, yellow, re yellow five, and red 40. And I know red 40, people can be allergic to that. I'm not sure about the yellow five, but again, that is the entire ingredients list. Um, I do wish that the natural flavor was de um, defined a bit more, but I love that these are the entire ingredients list for these things. I'm sorry, I'm being really repetitive today. Um, but, you know, yeah, like how often do you find that in any kind of food? And so I'm sure that that also has something to do with the price, the fact that they are going with what is ultimately such a simplistic um, ingredient list for these things. You know, unfortunately, when you go organic or you go, you know, more simplified with things and don't have a ton of preservatives and all that in the ingredients list, it jacks up the price. So I wouldn't be surprised if that was part of why these are ultimately $10 each. Somebody else said that they like doing the milk too, so thank you for that. And yeah, um, somebody else said that the Mac and Mellow didn't appeal to them that much. And, you know, I, I kind of agree just because of the mental association, like I said, with macaroni and cheese. But here we go. I do like that there are marshmallows in it, though. Like, that's just kind of cool to me. I, I like the throwback, you know, to childhood cereals. Ooh, this immediately smells good. Hmm. The puffed corn is kind of weird. Like in my first bite, I had marshmallows on the spoon as well, and that gave a really nice sweetness, but the, I don't know, the puffed corn, like macaroni noodles, I don't know, they, they kind of give a weird taste. Mm. Yeah, I gotta say, I, I do not really like the Mac and Mellow one. Um, Alright, so I definitely recommend... Um, I actually don't know if you're able to order. I'm going to go to mishmash.com really quick. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. So, yeah, if you click on it, you actually can buy um, either two boxes of each or four boxes of one or four boxes of the other. Um, you can also get the Mishmash starter pack, which is just one of each, or you can go with the peanut butter and honey sandwich, which is two, or the mac and mellow, which is two, and those are going to be 20 bucks instead of the four boxes for 40. So, yeah, um, if you want to try the peanut butter and honey one, I definitely recommend it, you know, that you can get the two pack for the 20, so that is kind of awesome. Um, I may do that in the future because the peanut butter and honey one, I do really, really like that one. The Mac and Mellow, though, this, this, this isn't good. I, mm. I mean, I'm going to finish this bowl because, you know, I poured it, but yeah, 
once again, this is why I pour the milk first, because that way I can just put a little bit of cereal in, and there we go. But, yeah, this, I don't, I, mm, I don't really like the Mac and Mellow. And I kind of wish that I had looked at the site a little bit more to only get one of each box, but, oh well, you know, that's what I did. I got two of, two of each of them. Oh well. Alright, <laughs> this is turning into way too long of a video. You know what, I will come back when I am done with this bowl and let you know what the milk tastes like. Because I've still got this milk right here, so I've got a control group. I can let you know if the milk is sweeter or, you know, what kind of aftertaste that gives. So, be back in a little while. Hey, I'm back. So, the more I ate the Mac and Mellow bowlful that I poured, the less I liked it. Ugh. And that's unfortunate. It really is. I mean, the marshmallows are good. Marshmallows are very good, but, you know, how do you, how do you screw up marshmallows in the cereal? Um, but yeah, the, the cereal itself, the little puffed corn macaroni noodles, not good. And that, di and that disappoints me, you know? I really wanted both of these to be good. <coughs> mm. Excuse me. Ah, <sighs> but yeah, I really wanted both of these to be good. Um, final thoughts. One thing that I worry about with trying anything new with Good Mythical Morning is that I love the two of them so much that I often wonder, is that going to color my reaction to different things? Like when they released Lost Causes of Bleak Creek, the young adult novel that they, that they came out with in 2019. I wondered to myself, you know, do I actually like this novel? Is this novel actually good? Or is it just my love for Rhett and Link that I'm sitting there going, oh my god, this book is amazing. And now I really do think the book is amazing. <sighs> Definitely go and read it. Lost Causes of Bleak Creek. It, oh my god, so good. And literally, like, there are a bunch of different YouTubers, um, mostly in the writing, uh, you know, the writing YouTube section or booktube people who have released novels, and they generally seem to be horrible. You know, they have been self-published, and it's like, you know, all of these writer YouTubers or booktubers are saying all these different things about, you know, oh, this is the best way to get an agent. Oh, these are the mistakes that you don't want to make when writing. And yet their novels are these self-published dumpster fires, which are making all the mistakes they say not to. And then here come Rhett and Link, not authors, but, uh, well, I mean, now authors because they have a published book, but... You know, they created this great young adult novel. I, oh, I, I need to do a dedicated review to Lost Causes of Bleak Creek. Anyway, back on the main point, I worry that because of how much I love them, it is going to color what I think of the different things that they release, and I'm not going to be able to give a fair opinion because of that bias. But luckily that hasn't happened with this serial. Um, the peanut butter and honey is definitely worth it to buy. I love how they found that balance between the peanut butter and the honey flavoring, because like I said in the first video, the peanut butter is always such an overpowering flavor. And I mean, they've said that in GMM episodes. And, you know, you, you lose the flavor of the honey if the peanut butter isn't balanced correctly. But somehow they found a great balance of the peanut butter and the honey where you still get the honey taste. And it really does remind me, because I love peanut butter and honey. I was never a jelly person. I'm still not a jelly person. I will still absolutely put peanut butter on a freshly toasted English muffin or piece of toast and put some honey on it and enjoy the heck out of those things. And having a cereal that is the equivalent of that, it is just, it's such a comfort, you know. And this, like, I'm sad. 
I'm, I really kind of am. I am kind of sad that the sweet Mac and Mellow didn't live up to my expectations. You know, like I said, the marshmallows are good. How do you screw up marshmallows in a cereal? The puffed corn, I, it gave a weird after, a weird kind of chemically tasting aftertaste and I don't know, you know, it, it stayed crunchy in the milk, you know, that was good. It didn't get overly soggy, overly fast, so that's a good thing. Um, I don't know, you know, my taste is going to be different from all of yours, so if it is something that you want to try, go for it. I do suggest going with the $20 one of each box, or if you want to just pass on the Mac and Mellow altogether and go with the peanut butter and honey sandwich, go with the two boxes of that for 20 bucks on mishmash.com. Um, I'm not sponsored, but I almost feel like I should be. Anyway, next video I will do the milk taste. Um, I did, you know, I did completely finish this. I drank the milk that was in it, and I didn't really like the taste of the milk after the, the Mac and Mellow because it it felt like it take it took on that kind of artificial chemically taste of the puffed corn noodles, and yeah, I eh. <laughs> so the milk after the Mac and Mellow not good, but. We'll see about the peanut butter and honey one next time, and I think I will also grab um, a, bro a box of Frosted Flakes and we'll compare ingredients, you know, see what the ingredient list looks like on the Frosted Flakes as opposed to these guys. Because like I said, I do appreciate that the ingredients here are so simplistic. Um, so yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Uh, you know, if you have to this point, I know this was an overly long video for a serial thing. Um, thank you so much for the views on the last video, and I hope that this one reaches just as many, if not more, of you. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.